you have to understand what they are, you have to understand their quirks, their weaknesses, but any Land Rover still on the road is really an asset to, to the country. I'm Sam Greenwood, and I have a company called Greenwood Automotive who rebuild Land Rover Defenders. My first memory of Land Rovers was as a boy, I learned to drive in a Land Rover. It was one of those that when you first drive a Land Rover, and especially to learn to drive in a Land Rover, you've got to get properly used to. They aren't a normal car, they don't do the speeds of a normal car, and they do take a lot of getting used to, but as a, as a learning process and a learner driver at age 17, it's, it's probably the best car you could ever learn to drive in. I think from there, uh, I went to an agricultural university uh, and the amount of Land Rovers that, that young farmers and friends had at the time w w was again a, a segue into, into me finally going down that, that career path and very quickly became apparent that Land Rovers, when they bite you, w w when the passion is there for, for Land Rovers, I think that's probably for life. I set up Greenwood Automotive now over four years ago uh, and we basically go about modernising and improving on the Land Rover vehicles that customers bring us. One of the main reasons we started the company was to produce a vehicle that I thought there was a gap in the market for. We saw a nice increase in demand for series vehicles. They've got a step front end, they're, they're, they're a narrower track, they don't have the arches that Defenders do and just generally there was a appreciation that was growing to classic Land Rovers so we thought well what is there a market space and is there a demand for something that looks like a, a series Land Rover but the the big thing for us was was getting the drivetrain right getting the handling right getting the the, the the engine right but actually if you didn't know anything it would still look like a, a series Land Rover driving past when we Rob and I first sat down we sat about and said what works if we're going to build an 88 inch chassis so it's a small chassis to fit things into so we ended up looking at can we improve the power? So in the end, we went for a 2.5 Durotech from Ford, brand new. Uh, we mated that to a modernised and upgraded Defender Puma gearbox, the MT82 gearbox. We fitted Defender power steering, we fitted Defender axles with Defender brakes. Um, so just to give drivability, but still retain the quirks and the, the, the fun that we saw in the original base vehicle. This first vehicle took three years for us to produce, way longer than we thought and way more money, which is probably the, the norm, but it, it, it's now come to a fruition. Uh, and for us to actually go down the road in a vehicle we've created effectively from scratch, it's amazing. It, it handles incredibly nicely on, on adjustable suspension. The power is lovely. It isn't ridiculous. It isn't too much. It sounds lovely when you accelerate hard, but it is lovely and quiet when you don't. Sits on the motorway happily at motorway speeds. On a B road is probably its absolute perfect scenario. It, it really does surprise other vehicles on the road when they see a series Land Rover overtaking. The feeling certainly of the first couple of customers who've driven it, just say it, it, it feels like it could be a daily car, which it never used to be. And it just really cements the fact that we think there is a market space for, for modern interpretations of original classics. We set about this project with the intention of creating a car that anyone could use, but with retaining the original factors. So being able to start first time every time is brilliant. The audio is absolutely fantastic. The power steering really does make a lovely difference. And just those modern touches that people forget. We've kept things like the full beam headlight switch on the floor. We've gone with a centre dash without the plastics of a Series 3 dash, so it's a Series 2A style dash. We've gone without set headlights. It would be lovely to have the, the inner Series 2 headlights, but we wanted practicality. So it's been this mix of trying to balance new and old, the practicalness of, of, of modern stuff, but keep the interest and the excitement of driving a classic car. So a Sunday coffee run, if you know you're going to get there and back, it's just a nice feeling, which some classic owners don't have. All of the elements that we know and love and have a, a, a passion for, but to smooth that out enough to bring it into, into this century. I'm Sam Greenwood and I own Greenwood Automotive. <laughs>